Ultimate Frisbee is a game of speed, strength, and instinct. And over the course of the past several decades, the commitment to training at the highest levels and boasting truly elite athletes has transformed this once thought of laid back, flower child, hippity dippity activity into something many say is everyone's favorite sport. They just haven't seen yet. People were definitely hesitant to support um, Ultimate. It's definitely less mainstream. When it comes to Ultimate Frisbee and telling someone, oh, I play this like very weird sport that you play in like your backyard with your parents. They sort of act nice about it. They're like, oh, that's like really cool. And um, I'm sure in the back of their head, they're like, this dude's just weird. <laughs> My high school had the standard, you know, like the soccer dudes and tennis players and like cross country runners, things that you tell people and they're like, oh, like I understand what that is. When you tell someone that you play like ultimate frisbee, like, oh, like, yeah, like, my dog loves that. Or the chains, like, playing disc golf, like, and it's like, yeah, it's nice that you know what a frisbee is. That's, that's very nice. Twenty years ago, you never would have imagined that A, North Carolina Ultimate is the pinnacle of the sport, and B, they're also really good sportsmen and, and good dudes. The Triangle Ultimate scene has done a really good job uh, recruiting young players at the middle school level and the high school level. Lots of the guys on the current team uh, I coached when they were in high school and even some in middle school. Uh, and that means that they have a lot of experience playing the brand of Ultimate that we like to play, which makes them college ready as soon as they make Darkseid. Darkseid? Why Darkseid? Why not the Tar Heels like every other North Carolina team? The reason it's called Darkseid is sort of up for debate. I've talked to lots of the founding members and they give me different answers. So there are three answers that, that are repeated the most. The first is that the team used to practice on E House Field. The practice slot was from 10 to midnight. They were practicing under the moon and, and that's how they started Darkseid. One of the other references is Dark Side of the Moon, so lots of Pink Floyd fans, people referencing Dark Side of the Moon. And finally, yes, there is a Star Wars connection, lots of Star Wars fans, so there's a, there's a Dark Side in reference to Star Wars. What makes Dark Side different is love. I can't imagine that, uh, that other sports teams at Carolina care as much about their program and their teammates as we do. In many ways, Liam is, uh, Liam is the heart and soul of the team. Liam, the, the mystery man, the enigma guy, uh, I'd say he's the, the heart of the team. Liam is probably the best player on this team. Liam is like kind of like the triangle's like anointed one. He has maybe the best youth ultimate resume of all time. Like he is the player, multiple world championships, national championships on the club level. Like he is just the talent. He is the, he is the winner. Talk to each other, love each other, be with each other, right? We need what you got today. I'm very shy, very, I think guarded uh, maybe. I am intentional with the people that I let into my circle, those being generally teammates. I reserve a lot of energy and a lot of love for those people. You need to have guys who, uh, you know, up and down throughout the roster can play their role, but you need someone, at least one on the team, who's gonna win you the game, and Liam's that guy. I don't feel external pressure. The only pressure I feel is to uh, live up to the expectations and the standards of my teammates, and to live up to my own standards and expectations. Hard to believe that a team could win a national championship and head into the next season with a chip on their shoulder. 
But to some outside of the dark side circle, 2021 had an asterisk. USA Ultimate, the governing body, was giving an extra year of eligibility to players who had missed a chance to play most of their college season. So for us, that meant that some guys who had already graduated uh, were still eligible to play even though they were no longer taking classes. Definitely after Nationals in December, I think there were a lot of opinions that were being floated out about the le legitimacy of the tournament and the legitimacy of the results. Yeah, a lot of it was sort of those older players won it um, for us and it wasn't, it wasn't you know, necessarily a team win, which I definitely think is uh, ludicrous. I didn't really think about an asterisk. I mean, it was a different format, but everybody had the same opportunity that we did. This is a new team. This is not the fall. You know, the goal was, given the doubt that, that I think you know, a lot of people had, it was, you know, prove that, that this group, you know, is, is just as good. So, a little more motivation for Darkseid to prove the doubters wrong and validate the previous title with another one. Darkseid would start their season at home. The first tournament of the year was on a frigid February weekend on campus in Chapel Hill. Darkseid's title defense was about to begin. Wait, 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 wait. You don't know the rules of Ultimate Frisbee, do you? Apologies, here's a crash course. Ultimate Frisbee is a pretty simple game. You play seven on seven on something like a football field, about 110 yards long and 40 yards wide. Every point in Ultimate starts with what is called a pull, which is basically a kickoff in football. The defense throws it, often the length of the field, and the offense catches it and initiates possession. Now, what do they do when they start playing offense? Ultimate is, at its very most essential components, a game of space. The offense is trying to structure players downfield in a way that creates space for cutters to work. Whether they're creating space to cut underneath, whether they're creating space to go deep, whether they're creating space to go on one side of the field or the other. You have 10 seconds to throw the disc. That 10 second count is referred to as the stall, and the stall is counted by the closest defender on the mark. You score by throwing your disc to a teammate in the end zone which seems simple, but can be tough when the defense is throwing their bodies around like they do. Each goal counts once, and the game is played to 15. Halftime is usually taken when the leading team reaches eight goals. Kind of like football, teams have an offense and a defense, but the reality is everyone must be able to do everything because the defense becomes the offense, and the offense immediately becomes the defense after a turnover. While typically the offensive players are more disc skilled and more precise, the best teams have great D-line offenses as well. And games are often decided by how good you are at converting turnovers, also called breaks. A break is when a D-line can convert that turnover and go on to score a goal. So there are a lot of different sets and dynamics to play in Ultimate that becomes fairly complex at the highest levels. But the rules of the game are actually pretty simple. Okay, pretty easy to follow, right? Now to the first opportunity of the year for Darkseid to defend their title and start the journey to Nationals. This is the Carolina kickoff. The mindset we had going into that tournament, uh, a lot of it was sort of determination. Uh, we got kicked some ass, especially after we won a national championship. So there's always this uh, like pressure to perform, I think, on the team. When I was in high school, even my senior year, after I got accepted to UNC, I didn't think that I was gonna play Ultimate Frisbee. But then um, I was friends with Andrew Wee, and he was a hardcore fan. Um, he came to UNC just to play Frisbee, pretty much. Um, and he told me there were tryouts, so I sort of walked on. Um, 
I got an extended tryout after getting injured and uh, eventually made the team. Let's go, let's go! John brings so much to the team. He is kind of like, in many ways, like the soul of the team. Like he's not necessarily always out there on the field with, with the game on the line, but like he brings that fire and energy and intensity and that buy-in. He's all dark side, like all the time. Good flash, Grayson! Check in, Walker! Good job, Walker! What gets me personally fired up is uh, seeing sort of the network effects of energy passed down through everyone. And so when I get lit uh, and see my boys get lit, obviously everyone's gonna go crazy. And so um, I think just like presence of mind and being in the moment for a lot of my, my teammates is sort of hugely important in getting me fired up as well. As Darkside was rolling through the competition at Carolina kickoff, you may have assumed they had all the calls go their way. You know, a little home cooking from the referees, right? Wrong. Ultimate Frisbee has a code, Spirit of the Game. Spirit of the Game basically means play fair, and most levels of Ultimate are play without referees. There are observers that can settle disputes, which happen in the biggest games with so much on the line, but the reality is Ultimate players take the field not necessarily with a win-at-all-cost mindset, but more with a win and earn the respect of your opponent by playing the game fair mindset. And that's one of the coolest things about Ultimate that I've seen over the past couple of decades in the sport. The ability to have a contentious conversation and walk away with, from it, continuing to trust and care about another person. We're not all the same. We don't all have the same opinions. And we can talk about things, and we can uh, care about each other, and we can work things out. There was no argument. Darkside was the class of the Carolina kickoff winning with ease. The team living in the moment, yet focused on nationals. Leadership, helping keep dark sides eyes on the prize. We got bigger things, right? Bigger <laughs> things to grind for. Yeah. 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 And a lot of growth coming, but also like a lot of growth accomplished, right? Like a lot of guys stepped up into really big shoes this weekend and showed out, right? That's huge, right? Like we'll lay down a great foundation for this weekend. Can't wait to see what we do next. When I was younger, I, I swam. And starting in sixth grade, I fenced uh, pretty competitively, fenced for five years up until the end of my sophomore year. In the past, I've had um, an infatuation with individual sports, but I think over time, I really fell in love with the team sport aspect, like building bonds with people that you really care about. And there's like a beauty in like only being a part of something, not being all of something. I haven't met very many people who care uh, about something as much as Andrew cares about the team and, and getting better. Andrew is a tremendous leader by example. He's really invested in individual success, uh, the individual success of his teammates. So, you know, he goes way out of his way to like help people get better, to watch film with them, to work out with them, to throw with them. And the team reveres him for that. Like he is beloved by his teammates. Hey, numbers, numbers. He brings the energy and shows people that he's bringing energy like more than anyone else on our team. He's always thinking about dark side. He's always doing the little things and has grown so, so much over the time that I've known him and over the time that I've been a captain with him. Um, like we said, going into our bye, like organic offense is gonna be kind of our ticket to winning this game. You know, we practice three, four times a week, but I see my teammates every single day. I see like half the team every single day. We just like to be with each other because we know that like we have each other's backs all the time. If you can say that you spent college hanging out and competing with your 30 closest friends, like, that's a, that's a pretty fulfilling experience to me. The road to repeat as kings of ultimate would next take them to the Queen City tune-up in Rock Hill, South Carolina. And from the start, Darkseid was feeling it. comes to cheers on the team, it sort of reflects the, the soul of that year's team. 
obviously you want to beat them in every aspect of the game. So you want to out cheer them, you know, out play them. And so when it comes to feeding energy on that sideline, it's hugely important. It's fun. It's fun to cheer for your teammates. It's fun to celebrate your teammates. A lot of times people refer to the sideline as the eighth man, but the sideline is worth more than, than one person, far more than, than one person. I grew up in a Presbyterian church, and I always sang in the choir. So it was sort of just a, a hidden talent. Uh, my family is like not really musical, and all of a sudden, like it was clear that I could sing. My mom really helped me like get involved um, with higher level stuff, so I sang in the North Carolina Boys Choir. I had this sort of incredible voice when I was really young. I definitely don't have like a beautiful adult male voice. And honestly, like when that sort of transition happened, that was really like when I started choosing Ultimate more than the singing. Coming in, it's easy with that much talent to be a little cocky or a little bit complacent, maybe. And he was none of those things. The teammates I have on Dark Side are definitely my best friends. I am forced to spend at least, you know, nine, eight or nine hours with them a week, and I choose to spend like 20 to 30 hours uh, a week with them. These are the guys that I want to spend all my time with at school. Like the Carolina kickoff, Darkside was cruising through the Queen City tuna, never really being threatened through six games. But there was a familiar foe waiting in the finals. While Darkside was dominating, the University of Georgia was never too far away, waiting for their shot at the title. You see, Georgia had fallen to Darkside in the championship game of college nationals, and many experts felt their experienced team of returning starters made them the favorite to dethrone Darkseid and make another run at Nationals. Keep on that trajectory that we've already started, all right? Got it, let's do it. Here we go, here we go, here we go. One more, go three, go three, one, two, three, Is it possible we're the underdog? Um, according to some people's narratives, but we don't care about those narratives. We're just here to get better and win. The champions were on the ropes, and momentum was not on their side. Your yeah, round is hard, yeah. so just bust your ass over into the fourth side and like go get a block. But momentum can change quickly in Ultimate, and a championship mindset must be earned. Dark Side knows how to finish, and Georgia is still trying to get there. Dark Side takes home the Queen City tune-up title by taking down Georgia. But for these two teams, it's just the first of three head-to-head -head matchups on the season, and the stakes will only get higher. We did a great job, but like that game shows that like we can be better, right? We can we can win that game by a little bit more. Dark Side is a captain-run team and a player-run team. It always has been. And that's something that's really important. Our coaches are really important to our program, but they're not the leaders of our team. The leaders of our team are players. I think in general, like this is gonna be windy execution and field position is gonna be really important. You could substitute the word coach for consultant. I'm here at practice to help them play in practice, run drills, uh, make observations. I don't do nearly as much implementation of adjustments as the captains do. So Matt Gucho Hannes has been consulting since 2020 after graduating from UNC in 2019. He was part of Darkseid's first national championship in 2015. Darkseid won again three years later, and Matt won the Callahan Award in 2019, which recognizes the most valuable player in college ultimate Frisbee. Dude's a legend. Matt's very important. Just an incredible leader, uh, incredible communicator, and an incredible athlete. 
And when you put those things together, you get a pretty special person. Unders, unders, unders. Dark Side's a really special thing. It's the central piece to a lot of the guy's college experience. And so it's really hard to graduate from college and totally step away from the team. So it's just sort of a natural progression to return to something that you care this deeply about and try to contribute to its continued success. Success was all Dark Side had known. Now it's March, and Nationals are less than three months away. On to the next tournament of the year, the Smoky Mountain Invite in Knoxville, Tennessee. From top to bottom, this was as robust a field as any team would see until Nationals. Headlining Smokies with Dark Side, Brown University. Another undefeated team on the year. And going into Smoky, you know, that was one of the matchups that we were looking forward to, right? Like we go to those competitive spring tournaments to play good teams and to be tested and to see the best of the best. And, and, that's, and that's what we got. We were up I, either three or four in that game. It was windy, the conditions weren't great, and they like clawed back and they kept grinding and you know they put us away. Very rarely do teams really come back punch back and fight their way back to a victory. It happens super rare. And I think that the outcome of that game was a testament to us not being quite ready to really play a fiery team um, that was determined to win. Dark side would lose not once, but twice at Smokies. It's sports, <laughs> you know? <laughs> You're supposed to lose sometime. We lose in practice all the time and it sucks. I'm never trying to lose for sure, but sometimes it's an important part of the process. No longer undefeated, Dark side season took a turn, and turns are exactly what can change the momentum of a game, of a tournament, of a season. Getting a turn and converting, that's the only way to really create a lead and ultimate. Every single point, the defense's goal is to force a turnover. And I have seen full games with five total turnovers. I've seen full games with 50 total turnovers. When the offense turns the disc over, whether the disc lands on the ground or it's intercepted by the defense, the defense becomes the offense immediately. And the defense is looking to break the offense's serve, almost in the way we refer to it as tennis. And getting a break when the D-line can convert and score, that, that is often the difference in any single game. Creating turns is like, is what makes me valuable on the field. And so, you know, especially at the highest level, Thinking about how to create those turns and on offense how to uh, prevent them, that's like pretty much uh, the, the heart of the game. You always say that offense sort of loses you games and defense wins you games. And so when it comes to someone like laying out, like Eli or Andrew getting a massive way of block, everyone goes absolutely nuts. If Smokies proved anything, it was that Dark Side was not invincible and the next tournament on their way to repeat as national champs and return to their winning ways was Easterns in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Easterns is a tournament that's generally pretty late in the regular season. It's generally the last really competitive like regular season event. I, I think there's sort of this Easterns curse for the team. Any year we win nationals, we actually don't win at Easterns. Generally the storyline is like, you know, we come out hot, we win kickoff, we win Queen City. We usually, we usually win, you know, the smoky type tournament. We feel like we're, we're a pretty good team and then we get punched in the mouth. To get to quarterfinals and change the course of history, the guys first had to play a flawless day one and they did. Dark side dominated. Four games played, four wins. I've long thought that one of the greatest parts of dark side is like our parents role on the team. We help out the team in a variety of ways. One of them is actually physical and nutritional and support in terms of making sure they have what they need on the sideline to keep themselves going through these long, long tournament weekends. And part of it is also sort of emotional and psychological of being, being supportive. Our side has the best parents in the country. I think that our sideline is definitely the best. It's crazy how involved they are and how on top of it they are. I've had some sneak peeks onto their spreadsheets and, and their group messages, and they got they got as much planning for the tournaments as we do, if not more. We have our own group me. We have our own communication line that's separate from the team, though it interacts and overlaps at times. And that communication, the parents who aren't on the sideline, who are at home, are keeping up to date with what's going on with this current tournament, and it 
it really makes a difference of having this cohesion around the team. I walk around the fields and I see other teams who are here who have, you know, not much support, not much parental support, um, and and I feel like it makes a huge difference. The parents' support, the play on the field, everything went right day one at Easterns. Welcome to Sunday, baby. It's time to lock in with a smile, right? Lock in with a smile, right? Even after a long day and late night, Darkside still looked fresh in the quarterfinals against Michigan, winning the game with ease. Hey, maybe the curse was lifted. Just two more wins to take Easterns. However, in the semis, look who it is. Georgia, again. We have to come out and beat them on energy right away, okay? It has to be out the gates. Let's go, baby. The game went back and forth. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! But when the game was deadlocked at 12, Georgia just had more juice. We know that if we are the best team we can be, then we're gonna win. We weren't good enough against that Georgia team yet. And the key is yet. It was sour to lose that game. I was like pissed off that we lost that game. That game has been on my mind every day. And you know, when I go run, when I go lift, when I go to practice, like that, that loss is, is fresh in my mind and, and sort of pushes me to, to wanna get better. Once again, Darkside was reminded that they could be beaten. The trip to Nationals seemed like a done deal when the season began, but it still had to be earned. It was time for the last tournament of the year, the Atlantic Coast Regionals in Axton, Virginia. Here's the bottom line. Win Regionals and you punch your ticket to Nationals. So after an undefeated day one, William and Mary was next and a win means you're in. Semis is obviously really important because that's sort of the game to go to, to head to nationals. A lot of teams don't really have that opportunity. Like there's dozens upon hundreds of teams that just get eliminated and their season's over at a tournament like this. With a bid to nationals on the line, Darkseid wasn't messing around. This game wasn't even close. Darkside was anything but complacent, taking care of NC State in the finals to win Atlantic Coast Regionals. <laughs> On the same day Darkside captured Regionals, Nearly 5,000 other UNC students were in Chapel Hill donning cap and gown for graduation. Not these Tar Heel seniors. The parents took graduation on the road for this sweet setup that took place 10 minutes after Darkside's win. This is the commencement ceremony of the University of North Carolina here at our well-known satellite campus in Axton, Virginia. We didn't come here to play school, uh, and I'm not too worried about getting a, a diploma or like a sheet of paper that tells me that I took all the classes I need to do. The craziest or maybe best parts of me on the team um, is how bought in you get. And so I don't, I don't really think a lot of the guys care about university things like graduation or like 
orientation days or whatever events are happening. When you're on this team, like you come to play, uh, you come to be with your, your best friends and your friends for life. I feel much more connected graduating with my teammates than graduating with a bunch of people from Carolina who I don't really know. I'd much rather be graduating in Axton than in Chapel Hill, if that's where my teammates are. And I charge you all to go forth and make this world a better place. Congratulations. The regular season was over. Nationals up next. Dark Side was headed to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee, home to just over half a million people, located on the western shore of Lake Michigan. Known for its breweries, the scenic views of the Milwaukee River, beer, friendly Midwestern hospitality, and beer. And on this weekend in late May, it was the home of the best ultimate Frisbee you could find anywhere. This is the USA Ultimate College Championships. I want to win that tournament. I want to prove to everyone that we're the best in the country and that like no matter what happens, you know, no matter what happens in the season, like Darkside is the program. Darkside is the dynasty. Like you cannot just win a national championship without having to go through Darkside. For nationals, 20 teams make the tournament. Each team gets seeded and placed into pools. Every school gets at least four games, two on Friday and two on Saturday. Make it out of pool play and you're on to the quarterfinals, where every game from that point is single elimination. Dark Side wasn't the top seed overall, but they were the top team in their pool. And while there is some room for error in pool play, losing was not an option. Day one, game one and the opponent was Vermont. <laughs> Game two, just a few hours later against Wisconsin. Now, day two, game three of pool play. Next up, Ohio State, and the fellas kept rolling. One more game to secure a spot in the quarterfinals and get out of pool play unscathed. Cal was up next. After pool play, everything's low key. Downtime, a little meeting, and off to bed, because when Darkseid wakes up, a familiar foe will be waiting in the quarterfinals. Sunday at Nationals, a whipping wind, and the stakes are high. It's the quarterfinals, and Darkseid is seeing red. The rivalry is about to have a new chapter written. Georgia is back. Sure, I mean, I'm nervous for every game. I think it's like important to balance that with confidence. And I felt super confident going into that game. And I felt nervous because they're a great team and you can lose at any point at Nationals because there are a bunch of good teams there. I'd say for, for me myself, like walking onto that field, I, I was definitely nervous for my guys, but I've had this like hope hammered into me, like ingrained in me to, to just trust in our guys. I don't usually get that nervous before games but I was certainly the most nervous I've ever been before a game before we played Georgia. 
They were really the only team in my mind that had challenged us and, and could challenge us. Welcome back here to the 2022 D1 College Championships. We have the men's quarterfinal here from Milwaukee, Wisconsin at Eli Soccer Park. A rematch of the fall final. We have UNC Darkside taking on JoJo. With this turn of events, Darkseid's D draws first blood, and the defending champs took advantage. A three-goal lead at the half seems a little too close for comfort. But Darkside has found great comfort at this year's Nationals by turning up the heat in the second half. Hey, win the second, win in the second. One, two, three. Deep. Darkside takes out a rival with a decisive victory to close out the quarterfinals. Time to rest up for the semis, right? Not in college ultimate. Another game. Earning another game. That's the name of the game at this point. Feeling great. One more opportunity. One more game. One more game. One more game is all I can ask for. Slight change of plans. We are going to be eating at the trees. So pick up your stuff. Move to the trees. We're going to have some food and then we're going to get out as soon as we can. I think in most other sports you have a big game and then you have a lot of time in between in order to recover and kind of look forward to your next one. But the way that um, Saturday at Nationals works is, you know, you win a quarter, like congrats, that's great, but like in anywhere between two to six, eight hours, you might have another game that's going to determine the outcome of your season. That's super difficult. I think that is the less emphasized area of Frisbee that like the mental aspect of the sport once you're off that field, you have to like completely emotionally reset. Like, all right, got that done, out of the way, and now we have this next guy in front of us. On to the semifinals for Darkside, and leading the team in goals through five games, the freshman. My team just has great confidence in me. It's really easy for me to do the things I do well because my teammates are so good around me. It really like hides my weaknesses and allows me to do the things that I'm good at without having to like push too hard to create something or, or you know try to make something out of nothing. Like I'm really just allowed to let the game come to me and do what I'm good at. Do the bucket. <laughs> Within the lines, the game is the same. And the previous five games were all played on wide open spaces. Kind of hard to tell what the stakes are from field to field if you're a casual observer. But the semis have a different feel as Darkseid moved from the sideshow to the big top. Fans moved from the grass to the stands. Wide open spaces were suddenly replaced by fences. And for the first time in college nationals, Darkseid were the underdogs. Just hours after their emotional win versus rival Georgia, the fellas had to play two seed Colorado. Win, and you're in the finals. Lose, and you're done. Everyone has something to take. Everyone has something to take. We're ready. I believe in you. Let's do it. 
Let's do it. Let's go. From the first pull, it was clear these teams were evenly matched. Rutland Smith to the end zone for Ben Dameron and the dark side score. UNC 1, Colorado 0. Atkins up top, brings it in for the Mama Bird score. Rutland Smith to the end zone, Ben Dameron brings it in for the dark side score. Halen Learned in the end zone for the Mama Bird score. Calvin Stoughton with the assist. We're all tied up at three. Something needed to happen to change the course of the game, and it did. Two significant injuries would play a role in Darkseid's day. This hard landing would sideline Bodie Harmony for a majority of the game. And co-captain Andrew Lee was also banged up. It's frustrating to be at the championship event, right? The, the capstone of, of your season, um, of many players' careers, and to not feel like you're being able to, you're able to play at 100%. Definitely affected the trajectory of my tournament. Those are two of our, our really talented players, so it, it doesn't feel great to see to see them not be out there. Losing your top players, like there's this weird hush that, that comes over your team where you all get this feeling in the bottom of your stomach. Injuries did change the course of this game. With Andrew and Bodie on the bench, Darkseid was being challenged in a way they hadn't been all tournament long. Somehow grinding their way to a slim one goal lead at the half. But it actually felt like the champs were on the ropes. An extremely close first half, two very talented teams, two really talented offenses in particular. We felt like the name of the game was ask, ask Colorado to be patient, ask them to throw lots of passes to score, don't give them easy outs, easy opportunities for scores. 8-7 is way closer than we want to be um, at halftime, and especially given you know, my inability to play uh, at full speed, it was, it was hard to know uh, looking forward into that second half. Like, I knew it was gonna be difficult. Attack, attack, nothing to protect, nothing to hide. You got all your brothers and, and friends here, right? Attack, right now, all right, let's go. In the second half, something clicked as the defense absolutely locked in, and the offense took advantage. Passion, purpose, performance. Side score, three straight breaks for North Carolina. They're up 13-8 on Colorado. We often fall back on this saying, pressure breaks pipes. You know, we come at a team and we ask them to be really patient and methodical, and they may have success early on in games, and as the game progresses, uh, pressure breaks pipes. Pressure gets to them, they make little mistakes, uh, and we capitalize over and over and over again. That's another break for Darkside. North Carolina 14, Colorado 8. By the end of the game, Bodie and Andrew were back on the field, and Darkside was back on top, pulling away. Colorado's pipes had burst. Darkside with a decisive win, 15 to 9, against the higher seeded Colorado. I love it. There are no expectations when you're when you're the underdog. You just get to you get to go take it, right? Like. If, if they don't expect us to win, like we're not defending anything. We're just taking stuff. The mantra is, you know, don't wait for the other team to make mistakes. Don't wait for the other team to give us the win. We've got to go take it. We've got to earn it every chance we have. It's all love. This is the best team I've ever been a part of. I'm, I'm just so lucky. And uh, 
I just been soaking up every moment of it. And there are only a few more moments where I get to wear this jersey, where I get to play with these guys. So, yeah, <laughs> there's nothing to do but smile. It's love. One more. I believe so much, okay? I believe so much. It's Championship Monday here at Nationals, and it's no big surprise that we got North Carolina and Brown. These two programs have been at the top of the men's division. It's a really interesting game because North Carolina is unquestionably the deeper team, but I think Brown has the two or three or four top-level talents that might be able to carry them to victory. It's going to be a fascinating contrast of styles. Certainly the wind is going to be a factor. I'm not certain who gets the advantage in the wind. Both teams are accomplished at throwing in these feisty conditions, but it's going to be fascinating to watch it unfold. Brown is the favorite. They haven't lost a regular season tournament all year. Dark Side would need all hands and legs on deck. We have a pretty long history with Brown, I would say. I think we've we've been the two programs at the top of the game for the last four years. We know they're good. Like They obviously have superstar players like John Randolph. That guy is cracked off his mind. And so going into that game, definitely like a lot of nerves. They're a really gritty team. I think we saw that at Smoky Mountain Invite, but you know they proved that all season long. They beat really, really good teams. Our men's division final is a matchup of our last two national champions, University of North Carolina Darkside and Brown University Brownie in Motion. The track record for Darkside at these nationals has been to turn things up a notch in the second half. All six previous games started off tight, but in the finals, Darkside was loose from the jump. Freed with a D, disc over to dark side. That's a break for North Carolina to go up 1-0. Bemo unable to connect in the end zone. Disc back to dark side. Brown looked uncomfortable at the start, almost like the stage was too big. But this team was undefeated on the year, too much talent to stay down for long. But after this goal that pulled Brown to within one, Dark Side started doing Dark Side things. I think that given Brown's success, especially the night before, I don't think that a team with that much regular season success was used to being punched in the mouth like that. This is a team we know that can punch back. Um, we've been up on this team. They're, you know, they're certainly not going to give up. This is the finals. Um, they deserve to be here. Don't get complacent. Stay in the moment. Don't get too comfortable. Even expect the other team to have success. Be ready for them to have success. Good teams don't win because they take their feet off the gas pedal in the second half. And uh, we knew that they were going to come back. Other than their dominating win to wrap up pool play, Darkseid hadn't had a more impressive first half. Was this really happening? 
a cakewalk in the finals? Yeah, right. Dark side on O to start the second half. Just go for Nabimo on the dark side turn. Ron Randolph to the end zone for Leo Gordon at the Bimo score. their strong start to start the second half. It only validated that, you know, it was gonna take more from everyone in order to secure that win. Cal Nightingale to the end zone for Taylor Johnson and the BMO score. A comfortable lead was now just two. And even the most sure-handed had a few second half jitters when the lead started to shrink. Just dropped it, maybe maybe a little too tight coming out of, out of the half. Part of me was really nervous and the other part of me was knew that it was my responsibility to project confidence um, to the team, to the guys on the field. So, you know, when it was time for me to walk out to the offensive line and, and talk to them about the next point, you know, fake my level of confidence to make them feel like we were fine and we were gonna punch it in. A comfortable lead was now just two. The problem for Brown, their opponent had yet another gear. In this race to 15, Darkside was about to turn on the afterburners. William Searles goes to the end zone. Eli Freed brings it in for the dark side score. We came out on offense, you know, first and thankfully last chance to win the game on O. And as the, the Frisbee starts, you know, making its way down the field and you get closer to the red zone, you, you start getting this, this tingly feeling inside. We worked it up super well, patiently, short passes. It was going to be another kind of war of attrition as far as being patient enough to find the right opening. Jay Mack and Rutledge did a really good job of, of moving the disc side to side as we, as we uh, moved up the field and changed our angle of attack. We have John McDonnell and Tommy Williams sort of playing a little, a little catch, a little two-man game right outside the end zone. We had our set working outside of the end zone, and at that last second, Tommy slips up line. Tommy kind of wriggled free up line on the break side, and John with a little half pivot, high release, outside in flick, leads him into the end zone. J Mack is crafty as ever, just floats a perfect pass right over the defender under that front cone, completely uncontested. Tommy catches what's basically a free, free goal to win the national championship. And that's a tournament winner, folks. North Carolina Dark Side 15. Brown Browning in motion 10. The race to a championship was over. Dark side, back to back. Back to black. We did it. It's we did it all in one moment. It's everything that everyone did, every moment over the course of the season, every workout, every throw you throw outside of practice. It's like when that final goal gets caught and you take your steps towards the field, it's just, it's us. It's just us. Not something I'd ever felt before and not something I'll ever feel again, uh, which is the way it should be. I was really sad in that moment, really grateful and really sad. There's so much wrapped up in the end of the season, regardless of the outcome. In the moment, like, amazing that we won. Like, I was really joyous and hugging on my teammates, like, loving on my guys. And in the back of my head, I'm like, there's the end. I mean, that was the, the last game of College Ultimate that I'd be playing. We did this. We did this. Every single one of us did this. Every single one of us did this. Just look around. That's all from me, baby. Yeah. Hey, it's all us. It's all us. Hey, I love you guys so much.
Repeat after me. We are we got. We are we got. We are we need. We are we need. We are we got. We are we got. We are we need. 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 We